to wake up in the morning to the quiet of the cove and hear Aunt Bessie talking to herself and to hear poor Uncle John mumbling wishes to O'Neill. It made me feel like everything was fine. I was born down by the water it's here I'm gonna stay I've searched for all the reasons why I should go away but I haven't got the thirst for all those modern day toys so I'll just take my chances with those salt water joys following a little brook as it trickles to the shore in the autumn when the trees are flaming red kicking leaves that fall around me watching sunset paint the hills it's all I'll ever need to feel at home this island that we cling to has been handed down with pride by folks who fought to live here Taking hardships all in stride So I'll compliment her beauty Hold on to my goodbyes And I'll stay And take my chances with those Salt water joys How can I leave those mornings With the sunrise on the cove and the gulls like flies surrounding Clayton's Wharf. Platter's Island wrapped in rainbow in the evening after fog. The ocean smells are perfume to my soul. Some go to where the buildings reach to meet the clouds, where warm and gentle people turn to swarm and faceless crowds. So I'll do without their riches, glamour and the noise And I'll stay and take my chances with those salt water toys Some go to where the buildings reach to meet the clouds Where warm and gentle people turn to swarm and faceless crowds So I'll do without their riches Glamour and the noise And I'll stay and Take my chances with those Salt water joys Good evening And welcome to this week in review I would like to apologize for my hoarse voice It is due to the flu In our stories tonight We have Graduation 2007 and Councillor June Iscott with her report. Please stay tuned for these stories after this. Burgio RMCP will be celebrating Police Week by hosting an open house at the detachment on Wednesday, May 16th from 2 to 4 p.m. Drop by for a visit and put your name in for a door prize. They look forward to seeing you there. On Friday, May the 11th, the grade 12 students of Burgill Academy held their graduation. The evening started off with a church service at 6 p.m. As 25 young adults made their way up the aisle, the church was filled with family and friends who came out to support the graduating students. <laughs>
During the service, Melissa Biller sang Letting Go by Susie Bagus as Matthew Skinner played the guitar. After the service, everyone was to gather into the gym for the rest of the graduation exercises. Mrs. Doris Pink was the MC for the evening. After everyone was seated, the grad class was introduced. But I'm not gonna cry Alicia Venture Thank you. 
Sonia Anderson. Memories as good as gone. Tearing off those mountains. Racing out 53 and all joy the town. Sure, made a little trouble, but I learned from every mistake. So there's no regret. We've done the best we could. So I'm not gonna cry. William McDonald. Now I want to settle or have your tea. And I've waited my whole life. No, I'm gonna fly right out of here. These have been the best years of my life. So I'm not gonna. It's been a long and winding journey. We've lost a few along the way. Still, we must be through the tribulations. Now it's time to celebrate. It's time It's been a long 
served thereafter, the parents and invited guests were served cold plates while the students and their dates ate pizza and pop. Several guest speakers got up and gave greetings to the students. These were the MHA Calvin Parsons, Florence Courtney for student council, and Jerry McDowell for the town. 
Alicia Thatcher and Christopher LaFosse were the valedictorians. They each had turns roasting their fellow students. We'll start off with the new man on campus, Billy G. McDonald. He moved here for grade 12, and he's a pretty good guy. They say him moving here has something to do with a girl by the name of Sonia Anderson. Nonetheless, I heard rumors that he was enrolled in karate or kung fu or taekwondo chi or something like that while living in Nova Scotia. Virgil doesn't exactly have the best karate program, so Billy Jean had to find a substitute. One Sunday evening, Billy Jean was frisky. He started putting the moves on Sonia. Sonia was in a little of a bad mood and was watching the story. She wanted no part of it. It began to pick on her, and she quickly threw him to the ground and put him in the ankle lock. The next day at school, Billy Jean was a no-show. He came back a week later in a cast and with crutches. <laughs> Billy Jean is now in search of a new hobby. Son has always been a friendly, quiet student, but on the Marvel Magic Ski Trip, there was an unfortunate turn of events. She was traveling in the van with Keely, and a good old Mr. Milton Thatcher was a far behind. Son had a big breakfast, and unfortunately her, for the van and her stomach didn't seem to agree. She ended up losing her lunch in the van. Mr. Codlaw began to panic. How would they possibly clean up the mess? No worries. Milton, or McGarver, as they called him as a child, wasn't far behind. He pulled up behind them and assisted the situation. He popped the trunk, pulled out his emergency kit, which contained a bowl and a blowtorch. <laughs> he proceeded to melt snow, some snow and wood away the mess. It took a bit of trunk load of snow and 10 propane takes later, but they finally got the mess cleaned up. Son had to go to the dry cleaner and missed the first key's lesson, but everything worked out in the end. As for Mr. Kaba, he traded his van in the next week. The youngest male and female students cut the cake. That was Marcus Anderson and Brittany McDonald. The dance followed after the supper. Tyler Neal and Victoria Piercy were crowned king and queen.
I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the graduating students and wish them all the best in their future endeavors. Councillor June Escott dropped by the studio with news from the council. Hello, greetings from the town of Burgio. I am a town councillor and I sit on a committee uh, that is public relations. And so I'm here this evening to let you know about a couple of things that uh, we'd like to bring to your attention. Coming up on Wednesday, May 16th, it's Municipal Awareness Day. Now, um, the Newfoundland and Labrador Federation of Municipalities, uh, that's a mouthful for sure, uh, they encourage all of the communities to actually promote the fact that we have town councils and that the town council uh, provides a lot of municipal services. And so uh, I think that uh, most of you out there would know that all of the Town of Burgill Council meetings, um, people can attend them uh, and uh, observe what happens at a council meeting. We're especially encouraging anyone that might be interested to join the town council to come and observe the meeting on Wednesday, May 16th. Um, there will be an election um, for a new councillor. Uh, uh, we had a resignation. Uh, Mr. Searle Warren stepped down from his duties as a volunteer town councillor. We'd certainly like to thank him for his years that he sat on the council. And uh, But we need now to um, put someone in his seat. So we'd certainly like to uh, have people in the community really think seriously about joining the council. You know, um, people need to volunteer. This is a very important uh, opportunity for people uh, because, you know, you can help to shape the vision of the future of Burgio. You can lend your voice and represent others in the community. And uh, so while uh, being a town councillor is a challenge sometimes, it certainly also can be very rewarding. And so um, I just want to remind you that you can attend that uh, Municipal Awareness Day meeting on Wednesday, May 16th, uh, but nominations day is actually May 22nd so if you are interested in becoming a counselor you can drop by the town office you can fill out nomination forms and then there will be an election on June let's see what that is election day is Tuesday June 12th um, so we hope to see you at uh, the town council meeting on May 16th um, another thing that's happening for Municipal Awareness Day is an open house at the museum. Uh, there is a committee working uh, with the Burgio Centennial Memorial Museum. Um, we've accessed a CDEP grant that will allow us to upgrade uh, some of the inventory. Uh, we will hopefully be hiring some students for the summer. And so on Wednesday, May 16th, uh, you can visit us at the museum if you like. We're actually looking for people in the community that might be interested to be on a Tidy Towns committee uh, because the town of Burjo as registered for the Tidy Towns competition and there are eight different categories in which uh, Tidy Towns can actually benefit our communities and I just want to run through those uh, for those of you who might be interested in some of these things. Uh, Tidy Towns promotes uh, tourism, our economy which of course is very important to us, urban forestry and landscaping of course a lot of people are out there beautifying their properties and trying to do what they can with what they have. Uh, public health is affected by of course our surroundings and our environment. Um, we gain community strength by being a part of a larger um, a larger organization, something like Tidy Towns. It is a provincial uh, organization. Environmental awareness, of course, uh, you know, everybody's talking about the environment these days. The government has just announced um, uh, quite a lot of money to be putting into uh, green plans, and so uh, that is also uh, in the Tidy Towns uh, program. Uh, availability of expertise. We have people who 
who can offer us support in this area. And then, of course, there is also heritage awareness and promotion, and of course, working with the Burjo Heritage and Museum Committee, uh, we're certainly trying to do our part to look at some of Burjo's heritage and trying to also promote the fact that we have a lovely community museum and uh, but we do need volunteers to help us so certainly if you're interested in tidy towns and beautification you know gardening and being outdoors and all those kinds of things you know uh, you may not really want to sit on a committee um, but uh, it would be just a few hours a month of your time and uh, certainly we would love to see you at the museum on May 16th we're going to be there the committee that sits now which is Lisa Dernford Gilbert Melbourne, Dorham Keeping, Donna Warren, and myself, the chair of that committee, we will be there throughout the day on Wednesday, May 16th. We're going to be serving a light lunch, coffee and tea. Certainly if you're working that day, maybe you could join us for lunch, but we will be there from 10 o'clock in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, and we would really love to see you there, just to see what's happening at the museum and maybe just some information sharing. Um, so. Um, I think that that's a really good thing. Um, I'm looking forward to actually working with the Tidy Towns people. I believe that uh, Burgio and the whole area is very beautiful and we have a lot to be thankful for and of course it's in our best interest to uh, also to keep it as clean and healthy as possible. On that note, uh, we could also talk about then um, Coming up May 14th to the 26th, the town of Burgio is doing their cleanup. And uh, so um, residents are encouraged to clean up not only their own property, but any vacant adjacent properties and the roadsides along their properties. Um, so for two weeks in May, if you put your uh, garbage and debris by the side of the road, then the town of Burgio will pick it up free of charge. Um, the town of Burgio also uh, just sponsored a Burgio Hurt Day Festival uh, similar to an Enviro Fair we had last year. They provided a free lunch and a number of other things to make this Earth Day Festival a success. And uh, so certainly a big thank you to the town of Burgio for taking on these initiatives and we would certainly encourage all the residents to get involved. If you have um, issues in your part of our community, um, you see something that, uh, you know, uh, not a safe practice that someone else is, is uh, doing, then, you know, give us a call and let us know. Uh, we do need your feedback. We do need you to write letters uh, for us to be able to address any issues. and. Um, because we're talking about the town cleanup, I would just like to bring up a couple of things that have been brought to my attention of late. Um, one of the uh, I see as a very um, bad thing that's happening uh, around the community and also on the community playground is that um, still kind of cold out and still getting over my bronchitis. Excuse me, please. Um, um, one of the things that's happening is that uh, some of the people in the community are seeing people taking their dogs uh, to the playground early in the morning. And uh, of course, you know, when you're out walking your dog in the morning, of course, uh, your dog needs to uh, have a poop. And uh, while this may be a crappy subject, uh, it is a subject that we do need to address. The playground is not a place for pet owners to be taking their dogs. Um, and so I would really encourage people to not do that because uh, residents have been coming forward to let us know that this is happening and eventually uh, these people will be fined if this practice continues. Um, I've spoken to the RCMP about the dog feces around the community and I have brought this issue to the town of Burgio uh, council meetings. Um, dog feces is not in the litter bylaws, but you know, um, 
just out of courtesy, if you are walking your dog uh, or allowing your dog to roam freely, you do need to look after uh, what your dog is doing. And uh, you know, some places have a poop and scoop. Uh, I do know that there are many residents who do carry plastic bags in their pockets. I think sometimes that uh, you know your dog might uh, you, your dog might have already done his uh, his dirty work, and then uh, later uh, you find that oh you didn't bring your bag. This has happened to me, and uh, you know sometimes you have to get creative. There's lots of litter around. You can uh, find a chip bag to uh, to scoop it in, put it in the garbage can. You know, kick it off the side of the road into the ditch if you have no other uh, course of action. But um, you know, it's a, it's a problem. It's on our um, streets that we walk on. It's actually uh, you know. Uh, on the roads going to the park and uh, it is just such a simple safe practice if you would just poop and scoop behind your dog um, you know so what more can I say about that um, we would just like for you to to clean up after your dog so that we don't have to be out there watching people and finding out who the culprits are so that we can find you um, so even though it's not in our bylaws, uh, if this issue does continue to persist, then maybe it's something we might have to look at putting in our bylaws and possibly fining people. I did ask our town council if we might be able to provide bags uh, when I was living in St. John's. Uh, sometimes when you would go to the park, there would be bags that would be available to the general public. And so I've asked the provincial park system uh, if they would provide those at the sandbanks. And I was told that yes, this could happen. And I have asked uh, our uh, town council also to provide these uh, bags for pooping and scooping. Um, and uh, so they would be placed around the community in a couple of different areas and hopefully that will help residents um, with this subject. And okay, moving along to um, another uh, problem area that I see with um, garbage is a uh, Beaver Hill drinking area, drinking water area. Now, you know, um, there are many places in the world where there is no clean drinking water. And while the town of Burgio, you know, is having some difficulties with our own water treatment plant, um, there are people, many of our residents, uh, I mean, both in Burgio and in other areas that use Beaver Hill uh, water supply. Uh, we have this beautiful resource uh, coming from the earth uh, that we really should be grateful for. Um, and every time I go there to get water, uh, what I have to do is clean up uh, from the cigarette butts to the old empty con uh, containers to cigarette packages to pop cans to Tim Hortons cups to McDonald's wrappers to garbage bags to plastic shopping bags. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one that cleans it up because there are times when I go there when it is clean, but for the most part, anytime I go there, I just can't understand why people would want to throw their garbage in this area where when we are when we are taking a free resource. So I would like for people to really think about that. And I think also if you're sitting in there and you're waiting your turn to get your water and you see someone throwing garbage on the ground, we mean we may need to start challenging these people. You know, we all need to have a voice in this matter because it's a growing problem. And if we don't address it, uh, then it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And um, and uh, that could be an even bigger problem. So I would certainly encourage uh, during the cleanup time from May 14th to the 26th that everyone get involved uh, and uh, that everyone take into consideration some of the things that I'm suggesting here. Um, another thing that I notice around the community of Burjo is that 
Many businesses don't have a garbage receptacle on the outside of their business. Now, many people will tell me they have a garbage receptacle inside. I've also been told by many business owners that nobody uses the garbage can outside. I would use a garbage can if it was outside. I think that if it's not there, then we can't use it. And I think that people who are kind of prone to, to just doing this anyway, if there isn't a garbage can or friendly signage, then they're going to litter. Um, and so I am encouraging uh, businesses, any place that has uh, the public coming to them um, really should have a garbage receptacle nearby so that it could be used if someone wants to. Um, so those are the main items that I wanted to bring to your attention today from the public relations point of view um, on behalf of the Town Council. Um, I want to say thank you to all of the participants and volunteers who helped to make Earth Day Festival 2007 the success that it was. We uh, did some volunteer recognition. We had a number of really incredible um, projects that were done by community residents and and by Burjo Academy students and um, we had some local music with Route 480 and the knockabouts and some special guests uh, performing on the Saturday night. Uh, the town of Burjo was the main sponsor, Ocean Net uh, was a sponsor and many of the businesses in Burjo also supported with financial donations and or uh, gift or product um, gifts. So uh, thank you very much everyone and um, if you have any concerns uh, or any uh, feedback regarding anything that you've seen uh, this evening by all means you can give me a call. My number is 886-2069. I'm Councillor June Hiscock and uh, thank you to the BBS for the opportunity to speak to the community in this way. Um, and hope to see you on Municipal Awareness Day, May 16th. Thank you. This concludes our programming for tonight. I would like to wish all mothers out there tonight a happy Mother's Day. And I hope that you truly enjoyed your day. Thank you for watching. Good night.